It's been a really great month on this channel for freaky monsters and creatures and beasts. We did some dragons as zombies, started the phobias as demons series, Pokemon as SCPs became one of the new most popular series on the channel, and then I did some less horror themed kinds of stuff with Skylanders and Suicide Squad, but still, pretty good spooky focus for this month. And of course, to finish off October, I'm taking a whole bunch of the awesome creatures that were submitted by my lovely subscribers when I put out a call for freaky mutant monster things. I'm gonna show off pretty much all of the ones that were submitted and redraw six to fit into a brand new Multiverse Tales story. Thank you to all who submitted. The story I think turned out really well and that couldn't have happened without the awesome creatures you submitted. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's go. Hit like if you want, subscribe if you feel like, but either way, enjoy the show. Kayla stood on a shoreside cliff, drowsy and in dire need of sleep. Her sentient biomechanical enhancement Charlie had her arm converted into a sound cannon that was bellowing a sort of whale call that was practically soothing her to sleep. Even prior to this mission, Kayla had already been exhausted and needing a break, but she felt she couldn't let her friends down when they asked for her help, especially not Taryn. She was so out of it that she didn't even notice his calls from above her. All right, Kayla, it's approaching. You should move out and let Heath and Alexis do their thing. Kayla? Kayla, can you hear me? He called from the back of his dragon ally Violet in the skies above. No response. The water 30 feet below Kayla broke as a head the size of a blue whale shot up from the depths on the end of a beastly neck. This finally jolted Kayla from her daze, but it was too late to run. A cascade of tentacles shot from the creature's tongue towards her. She tried to think of a useful weapon for Charlie to shift into, but nothing came to her in time. Luckily, Alexis sprinted onto the scene with stone-covered fists nearly half the size of her and slammed away the tentacles before grabbing Kayla and running her out of the way. Alexis set her down and turned back to batter away more tentacles still coming at them. Way to hold until the last second, Kayla, but Heath and I got it from here. Alexis ran, punching and luring the head of the creature farther over land as Heath shot through the air above on Sterling's back, who was barely able to hold the two of them airborne. Sterling groaned. I really should have just let you ride on Violet with Taryn, huh? Heath laughed. You're the one who insisted on having something to do on this mission. We only needed Alexis and Kayla. Sterling chuckled through his strained breath. Yeah, yeah, I know, but your ride's over, Heath. Alexis had gotten the creature's head fully over land. Sterling spun around in the air and Heath shot off him. Gonna try not to kill you, big guy. Hope you're as tough as you look. Hurricane Hammer! A torrent of wind fired around Heath as he flew down and slammed his fist into the creature's head. It shot down into the dirt and the ground quaked. The creature's eyes shut as a groan rumbled from its throat. It stayed down. Heath slowly managed to pull its entire body onto land as Taryn began tapping the glowing runes on his forearm to start making a portal. But making one big enough for this creature would take some time. The creature they'd just bested was the Titanus Placetosaur, and it had been the scourge of the civilizations that lived in these waters for some time. The group's goal here was to teleport it to waters of an uninhabited world, where it could live in peace and not bother any sentient life. Alexis dropped the stones from her arm and walked over to Kayla. You can't be losing your hearing on us already, Kayla. You're one of the youngest people in the group. Alexis gave Kayla an inadvertently aggressive pat on the back. It was meant to be playful, but Kayla shot her a snarl. I'm doing my best, I just zoned out for a second. Alexis was caught off guard. Yeah, I, I figured. I'm just messing with you. She backed off and went to talk to Sterling. Kayla immediately felt bad. That wasn't her, she was just so tired. Charlie could sense it. Don't worry about it, Kayla. Alexis doesn't take anything personally, but now that the mission's over, we really should get home. You've been up for 22 hours straight by now and taking on way too much work. Maybe tomorrow we can have a do-nothing day and we can just relax and... Charlie's voice trailed off as Taryn completed his massive portal. Heath pushed the creature through it. Taryn made more portals for Heath than for Sterling and Alexis to send them all back to their dimensions. Kayla mustered all the enthusiasm she could as Taryn turned to her next. She knew she'd never forgive herself if she said anything harsh to Taryn, as she had Alexis, so she did all she could to stay upbeat despite her exhaustion. He smiled his hopeful, yet often slightly somber smile at Kayla, as she wondered as always if she was noticeably blushing. Sorry we didn't have more for you to do on this quest, he said rubbing his neck. I just thought you'd enjoy the quality time. With, with the group, I mean. Oh, yeah, no, of course, I'm, I'm glad you invited me. 
She then wondered if she looked as tired as she felt. There was a pause, then Tehran asked, Hey, I... I don't know if you'd be interested, but there's this place I've been wanting to explore that could be pretty exciting. Would you like to join me? Uh, just the two of us? She and Charlie both knew she was far too tired for yes to be a reasonable answer. Yeah, absolutely, let's go! After sending Violet back to Tehran's world, Tehran and Kayla stepped through a portal to the mouth of a descending purple cavern. The sky above was orange and pink with swirls of other colors. Tehran walked down towards the cave mouth. Astra's brought you to this dimension before, right? Kayla stifled a yawn while walking alongside him. Yeah, the Everyverse, right? But we weren't here very long. Overseers come here to make creatures and see if it's worth bringing them back to their home dimensions, right? Exactly. I've been exploring this world when I have some spare time, and I came across this cave system. I haven't looked into it much yet, but I thought you might find it interesting as well. What she hoped he meant was, I actually want an excuse for us to hang out just the two of us. Or three if you counted Charlie as well. This is great in Altairan, but how long do you want us to explore? Because I really think Kayla should get some sleep, because she's been up for a really, really, really- Kayla's eyes shot open. Charlie, no- He's- It's fine, Tehran. I'm- We're fine. I'm fine. Tehran looked from Charlie to Kayla. Are, are you sure? Because we can do this another time. She knew she should postpone, as did Charlie, but still she said, I'm fine, really, I'm glad to be here. There was no way she was going to let Taryn think she was avoiding time, just the two of them. Plus, she did truly love exploring strange areas of the multiverse, especially if she was doing it with Taryn. He smiled. Okay, if you're sure. Come on, I want to show you something. He hesitated for a second, then grabbed her hand. They both got a chill, but neither said anything. They jogged forward with Tehran's glowing forearm briefly lighting the way before they came to a wide, open cavern with dozens of tunnels shooting off from it, with hundreds of jutting crystals lighting up the room. The soothing, multicolored light was gorgeous. They stood in the center of the cavern, drinking in the beauty, hands still locked. They both gazed around until their eyes met one another. They stared at each other for a moment. There was a brief second where it seemed like Tehran was starting to lean towards her when his expression changed from excited to concerned. She was about to ask what was wrong when she heard it too. The distant sound of splashing water and gargling cries that sounded like someone calling for help. They both turned to one of the tunnels and ran down it. The incomprehensible calls got louder and louder till they got to another open cave with a small lake at its center. It wasn't nearly as bright, but they could both see a figure thrashing in the distant water. Charlie shifted down Kayla's arm onto her legs and converted them into a set of hover boots. Don't worry, we're coming to help, she said, trying not to be angry at this drowning person for ruining her moment with Tehran. Tehran put a hand on her shoulder as she hovered off the ground. Kayla, wait, I don't know about this. Something's wrong here. He squinted through the dark, trying to make out the thrashing figure. Kayla felt herself becoming a bit angry at him for trying to stop her from saving this person, but she knew partially that was the exhaustion talking, and she forced herself not to reply harshly. I'll be fine, I can handle this. Just be on the lookout for- <gasps> Watch out! She shoved Taren back as a hulking, amphibious hound leapt right between them. Taren stumbled back and drew his blade. He thrust his enchanted weapon at the creature, and as it struck, its tip rapidly expanded, sending the beast flying backwards. It was unexpected, but Tehran had this handled, so Kayla turned back to the drowning figure. She hovered over the lake and got closer and closer. She got within reach. Don't worry, I've got you. The figure was still obscured in dark as she grabbed its hand, which felt crusted and lifeless. She finally got a look at its face, which was eyeless and null like a mannequin. A tongue suddenly shot up out of the water and wrapped around her ankle and yanked her down into the dark. Kayla yanked at her leg to pull it free as water shot up her nose and made her choke. Charlie shifted a blade out from himself and sliced the tongue, but two claw-like arms shot over her shoulder and kept pulling Kayla down. The light from Charlie's lens revealed a six-eyed scorpion creature dragging them towards its mouth. 
Charlie fully shifted Kayla's leg into a sword, and she kicked down, but the blade bounced off its outer shell. She was within inches of its maw when she spun her leg and slashed the blade right across its largest left eye. The creature shrieked and writhed, losing grip on her. Charlie shifted back to hover boots and boosted them out of the water. The creature's tail, at the end of which was the humanoid mannequin they'd believed to be drowning, thrust into the air and out of the water and smacked Kayla's back. She spun through the air and crashed into the water right near shore. Taryn was now holding back two of the razor-toothed hounds as Kayla crawled out of the water, with the thrashing tail headed towards them. I'm so sorry, Kayla. I had no idea it would be this dangerous down here. I'll make us a portal out as soon as I can. He thrust his blade at one of the hounds as it leapt at him, sending it flying backwards into the water. The scorpion creature ascended and swung its tail again at Kayla. Exhaustion slowed her reflexes and meant she couldn't duck in time, and she was smacked across the ground. She was dizzy and winded as Charlie shifted up her arm into a plasma cannon. Is this what first dates are normally like for you, Kayla? Because I'm not saying I'm against it, it's just not what I was expecting, and really I think it would be going a lot better if you weren't practically falling asleep. She ignored him and pointed the cannon at the approaching scorpion. She fired a barrage of blasts, not bothering to aim well, just hoping to hit any part of it. The blasts did nothing to its shell, but she struck another eye, then another, and the creature shrieked in angry agony. Kayla stood up, ready to continue, when she suddenly felt the ground rumble. The scorpion stopped. What was left of its tongue twitched in the air. It spun around and scuttled back into the water. The hounds, too, turned their attention from Tehran as the earth rumbled again, and again, and again. The beasts both suddenly darted into the tunnel that Kayla and Tehran had come from, vanishing into the dark. Seconds later, there was a whining shriek and a harsh snapping sound. The other hound suddenly sprinted back into the cave, past Tehran, and bolted down another tunnel. Kayla stumbled over to Tehran. I don't think I want to know what that thing is, do you? Tehran shook his head. I'll get us out. He was fiddling with the runes on his arm again. I'm really so sorry, Kayla. I certainly should have investigated more down here before I... But he trailed off as a portal began to open before him, then fizzled and vanished. He tried again as the rumbling got more and more intense. I, I, I don't understand what's happening. I can't make a portal. Something's blocking my ability. Kayla's head pounded with fatigue as she aimed Charlie at whatever was about to emerge, but before the source of the thundering steps could come through, surprisingly the second hound stumbled out, with its head twisted upside down as though its neck had been snapped. Its deformed head turned to face Kayla and Taryn with dead eyes and a strange purple fur now growing from its back. Ooze dripped from its maw as it stumbled towards them, followed by a towering humanoid beast whose fungus-covered back scraped the tops of the tunnel as it emerged into the room. Its skeletal head looked down at Kayla and Taryn and slowly reached towards them and took another rumbling step. Kayla fired blast after blast as she and Taryn backed away. Her bolt seemed to take chunks out of the creature, but it just slowly reformed with a coating of purple fur. The hound approached them faster. Taryn ducked down and thrust his blade up under its stomach. The tip expanded and it shot the hound backwards into the fungus beast, but the creature caught the hound and without flinching ripped it in half and tossed the halves aside as it continued marching towards Kayla and Taryn. Okay, we can't get past it, but maybe there's another way out. They both turned and ran down the same tunnel the other hound had fled through. The creature chasing them was at least slow, but this new tunnel was darker and darker, devoid of the lighting crystals. Taryn's arm lit up and Charlie's lens helped too, but the dark wasn't helping Kayla's exhaustion. They ran down the winding path until it started to open up, and Taryn almost ran headlong into what looked like a statue. He stepped aside instinctively and bumped into Kayla, who slipped and collapsed to the ground. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Kayla, I didn't mean to. He reached a hand down. With her teeth clenched, she took it, thinking, You're not mad at him, Kayla. You're just tired and angry and being hunted by a furry skeleton monster. He helped her up and said, I swear on my life, Kayla, I'll get us out of this and I'll... But he trailed off as he looked at what he'd almost run into. It was like an exact stone carving of the hound that had fled down this way. I've got a bad feeling about this. Kayla was so tired she couldn't even appreciate Taryn's inadvertent Star Wars reference. Taryn's eyes darted up ahead, then back behind them. The thundering footsteps were getting stronger and stronger. Taryn turned to Charlie. 
Charlie, do you have any way of... What would you call it? The, scanning the terrain to find us a way out of here? Absolutely! I think. I mean, I can try. I don't know what kind of range I'll get down here or what if I'll... Oh, wait a minute, I did it! A hologram map emitted from Charlie's lens and revealed the labyrinth of caves all around them. Ahead eventually came to a dead end, but there was another tunnel that had a path to the surface right through the wall next to them. Perfect, thank you, Charlie. Kayla, stand back. She backed down the hallway away from the approaching fungus beast as Taryn stepped around the now stone hound, still concerned about how it had gotten that way. He thrust his blade at it and the figure was blasted into the wall. It shattered to pieces and crashed open a hole, almost big enough for them to fit through. Taryn stepped forward and had at it with his sword as the beast continued approaching. Kayla was about to come help when a hiss echoed in her ears all around her. Perseus, is that you? Before Kayla could move, snakes wrapped around her waist and thrust her into a wall, pinning her in place. From the corner of her eye, she could see what looked like a little girl with snake wings and a demonic mouth for a head. Kayla snarled at it. On any other day, I'd probably think this was really cool, but I've had just about enough of this. Charlie shifted up onto Kayla's back, and his lens converted into a rocket booster. He blasted the creature and it shot back into the opposing wall. Kayla dropped to her feet, stumbling, then running towards Taryn, who was still trying to tear open the wall with the fungus beast nearly on him. Kayla, I'm almost through. I think a few more hits and we should be- But a glowing green tentacle suddenly shot through the hole he'd made and snatched Taryn. It tried to yank him through, but it just managed to slam him into the wall. Charlie converted into a sword and Kayla stabbed it through the tentacle. It dropped Taryn, but he collapsed to the ground, unconscious. The tentacles tore at the hole trying to get through, while the other two monsters descended on Kayla, Charlie, and their now knocked out ally. <music> Kayla dragged Taryn away from the wall as more glowing tentacles lashed through. The fungus beast reached towards her. Charlie shifted into a grapple hook and shot back down the cave and pulled her and Taryn away. Adrenaline was pumping, but Kayla didn't know how long it would last. She needed a plan. The snake-winged girl was skipping towards her. You can't escape me, Perseus. I'll get you this time. What was that kid supposed to be? Kayla asked rhetorically. Like Medusa's crazy daughter or something? Overseers are so weird. The girl's face started to shift to something closer to human, and eyes started to form. And Kayla assumed from what she knew about myths of Medusa from her world, that if this kid actually did have some relation, she didn't want to look it in the eyes. The fungus creature was now grappling the squid monster that had torn through the wall and was floating in between tunnels. As purple fur started to infect its tentacles, crab-like claws from its other limbs tore away the fuzz. As one of the limbs got more and more infected, it even pinched down one of its claws and severed its own tentacle. Kayla could hear the hisses of the Medusa girl behind her, practically on her neck. Alright, if this kid thinks I'm Perseus, let's see how gullible it really is. Charlie, close your lens. He did, and Kayla too shut her eyes and spun around to the girl. I'm not Perseus! She pointed towards the fungus beast. That is Perseus! Kayla couldn't see what was happening, but nothing attacked her. She heard the snakes go right by her. She opened her eye the tiniest amount to see the girl had gone past. Perseus, I want revenge, Perseus. The fungus beast just managed to stumble back from the tentacle creature as the girl shot off the ground and swooped up to latch onto its shoulders and stare it right in the face. The beast grabbed her arms tight and tried to tear her off, but before it could, her face turned fully human and from behind, Kayla could make out the slightest of lights emanating from its eyes. The fungus creature's body suddenly shifted from its furry texture to solid stone in an instant. Its grip was still locked around the girl's arms, so now she was stuck in place. Well, that worked out better than I could have hoped. And yet, she turned to the tentacle monster that was now fully in the tunnel and floating towards her. Kayla could feel her body starting to sway, and she shook herself to try and snap out of it. Okay, okay, come on, we can do this. Charlie, rollerblades, please. Charlie shifted down her legs and converted them into a hefty set of wheels. She heaved Taryn onto her shoulders, barely able to carry his weight. Charlie, I swear on my life, if we get out of this, I'm gonna sleep for a week straight. 
She shot right towards the creature. It thrust its underside up, revealing its maw, and let out a shriek and a blinding burst of light. Kayla instinctively clamped her eyes shut in time. The light still hurt even through her closed lids, but not enough to throw her off. She opened again, was a few feet from the creature, and feigned as though she was going to jump over it. It thrust its claws up and she ducked, sliding under, feeling the breath of its mouth as she passed under and shot to the now open tunnel. She bolted as fast as the blades could carry her and Taryn's weight, but the glow behind her told her that the creature was close on their tail. She shot through the tunnels, praying that any second she'd see the light of the opening. A claw suddenly whizzed past her head. It was practically on her. Finally, she turned a corner and could see the cave brightening. There was a glimmer of the exit, but she was so drained she didn't know if she could even make it. She moved and moved as fast as she could, but suddenly the weight on her shoulders stirred. Oh, what are we... Kayla! Taryn's whole body jolted as he came to consciousness, and it shook her enough that Kayla stumbled. They both flopped and fell and rolled across the cave floor. Once more, she held back anger, knowing that that hadn't been his fault at all. Part of her was so tired that she just wanted to give up, but as she saw Taryn stumbling to stand with blood dripping from his nose and a claw lashing towards him, she knew that wasn't an option. Charlie shifted up her arm into a sword once more. Okay, Charlie, one shot. We make this one shot and we're home free. Maybe, hopefully. The claw clamped around Taryn's waist. He cried out as it dragged him in, but Kayla ran up, grabbed another of its tentacles and flung herself up onto the skull that surrounded its head. She pulled her blade back. I'm too tired to come up with a fancy name for this attack, so just die, would you? She thrust her blade straight through its eye and slime burst from it. The beast twitched violently, its tentacles thrashed and spasmed, tossing Taryn aside. The creature's lights dimmed as it collapsed to the ground. Together, Kayla and Taryn, both exhausted, finally stumbled to the cave exit. They slumped down onto rocks nearby, leaned up against each other, panting and covered in blood, dirt, and slime. Before either of them could muster the energy to speak, they heard a loud sipping sound behind them. They both turned to see one of their allies, Astra, sitting on a nearby rock drinking from a comically large coffee mug. Hey guys, was out looking for you. Heath mentioned you went to the Everyverse Caves for a date or something. Came to warn you not to do that, but I guess I'm a little bit late, huh? You know you can't teleport out of there, right, Taryn? Well, I know that now. She took a long gulp from her drink and hurled the mug into a bush behind her. Was gonna come look for you after my drink, I swear, but I guess you saved me some time on that. Now come with me, I've got a mission I need your guys' help with. I mean, mostly Kayla, but Taryn, you can come help too. It was as if a burst of flame shot through Kayla's brain. She was going to lose it, and there was no stopping it this time. Why did people always need something from her? She just wanted a break. But before she could lose it, Taryn softly said, no, sorry Astra, you'll have to ask someone else. I mean, I don't want to speak for Kayla, but I think we're both too beat to take on anything else today. Astra glanced at Kayla, who just nodded silently. Astra rolled her eyes. Ah, oh, fine, I guess I can go ask Sterling and Alexis, even though I'm pretty sure Alexis still hates me and is just pretending not to. Later, losers, love you! After that, Kayla just stared at Taryn inquisitively. When he looked up and noticed, he asked, That look seems to imply you're thinking something. She tilted her head. You just don't strike me as the kind of person to say no when a friend asks for help, no matter what. Well, I always want to help people, but if you do everything people ask of you all the time and never take time for your own health and recovery, eventually you'll be no good to anyone. Helping yourself a lot of the time is an essential step to helping others. The workaholic in Kayla felt like it had been slapped across the face. That is so smart, it almost makes me feel stupid. Well, I, I certainly didn't mean to make you feel that way. He was cut off as she leaned in and kissed him. She didn't even realize she was doing it until they'd started, but she was completely glad she had. When they leaned back from each other, they both had goofy, tired grins on their faces. They both continued to sit, lean together in silence, staring at the cave they'd just survived. That is, until a few minutes later when Kayla said, we are gonna go in there again eventually, right? Oh, absolutely, Taryn nodded. We'll just bring Heath with us. Oh yeah, for sure.
And there it is, the latest multiverse tale and community redraw, and our new background for the next month. Massive thank you again to everybody who submitted, and as usual, gotta give a specific shout out to the great people that were selected. Cat and Otter, Dude with a Gas Mask, Toxic Axlow, Bonanza, JN421, and Kaleidoscope89. Another great redraw gone by, and another one coming up. So, the theme for November 2021. I want to do another story fitting into the Phobias as Demons universe, which I plan on expanding more in some future videos, but also by the time this next community redraw comes out, we'll either be right on the brink of December, or it will already be December, depending on the date that I end up putting it out. So, I want to do a demon episode and a Christmas episode. So, the submission topic for this next month is... Christmas demons. And once again, I'm not gonna explain further than that. Whatever you think would work for Christmas demons, go for it. I mean, I don't wanna see just a million Krampuses, but you know, I do expect to see a few twists on that. But anyway, as usual, I want people to submit two different poses of the character and submit some potential lore or backstory for your demon. There's a chance I end up tweaking it a little bit to fit into the story that I end up telling, but I'd still like to know what you want the lore for that demon to be. Super excited for that story and for all the submissions. And besides that, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popgrass Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and submitting, everybody, and I will see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.